I'm excited about today's topic. I haven't talked about it in a long time and it's something I've been doing myself the last couple of weeks. And so I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, and that is decluttering your activities. We think about decluttering our things and even our, our um, money situation, but what about your activities? When was the last time you actually took a good look at what things you participate in? Um, you know, the activities can be clutter too. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like the accoutrements that are part of the activities might be clutter, but the activities themselves can be clutter. So take a look at your schedule. What are things you're participating in that no longer serve you? Are there some things that you feel obliged to do or you feel dread about doing or maybe you feel bored about doing? Those are prime candidates for a second look at whether or not you can work your way out of those. I realize a lot of times activities require us to create an exit plan, an exit strategy, so that you don't get uh, leave people hanging or, or mess up your reputation or things like that. But if you are noticing that you are feeling obliged, feeling dread, or feeling bored with things, it's time to take a look and see why. Why are you still doing things that aren't bringing you joy, right? What We all grow, we outgrow things as well. And so I think it's really important to take a look at what, what might happen uh, if you were to let go of some of the things. And having a plan is going to help take away some of that obligation or dread or bored and provide you something to look forward to. Um, so take a look at that. Okay. Um, not only just at your calendar and what meetings you go to, but other activities, maybe something isn't necessary anymore. Maybe it's something that's become a habit and it's just not really serving you. Um, you know, I used to have a trip to the dry cleaners on my errand route. And yet I realized I don't, actually dry clean things except maybe twice a year. And so I took them out of the errand loop and added the them back into, you know, just occasional tasks list. So that it, it freed up some at least uh, mental time because I didn't have to think about it every week, even though I knew I didn't have dry cleaning. You still have to kind of run through your mental checklist when something becomes a habit. So take a look at things like that. Um, occasionally you did something cause your kid was really into it and now they're not into it. And maybe you still have some sort of letting go to do around that kind of activity and just admitting to yourself that you don't play piano anymore, or you don't make tin crafts anymore, or, um, your kid is never really going to finish their ballet lessons. <laughs> um, whatever it is, um, think about it. And sometimes it's just not a great time to be participating in that particular activity anymore. Um, I don't have kids, but many of my friends do. And while they're raising their kids, they have to kind of step back from some of the other activities. And as the kids are going to college and things, they're getting back into some of those activities that they um, had given up for a few years. But it's also a great time to see if you want to go back to those activities or if you've outgrown them and ready to do something new. What we're looking for is a core group of activities that you love to do and wish you did more of to fill in and replace that time. Um, and, and while I say that, because some of the activities may involve chores or errand running or obligation things, you don't necessarily wanna say you have to fill in everything with a love to do, wish to do. Maybe you just replace you doing the housework with uh, a housekeeper, or maybe you hire someone to run the errands and do the grocery shopping. So it doesn't necessarily have to be you give up that activity entirely. It could be you delegate it. Um, and especially as entrepreneurs, there's a lot of things we don't like doing anymore. Are you still writing all your own content? Are you still doing all your own posting? Are you still um, offering that one workshop that just doesn't do it for you anymore? What if you retired it? Um, those are the kinds of things I want you to look at when you're looking to declutter activities. We're looking for really what you love to do and what you wish you could do more of to fill in that time. OK, also, don't forget, we do want to declutter the accoutrements that went along with those activities. So if it's something you're putting away for now, go down to the basics again of what is involved in that activity. 
um, your favorite pieces of that activity. You don't need to keep every single thing involved with that activity when you're letting it go, even if it's just temporary. Um, so that gets rid of a bunch of clutter, right? A lot of decluttering right there. And then don't forget to adjust your money allotments, right? Was it a, a hobby or an activity that actually required a membership somewhere that you can let go of and free up that money for something else? Is it something that required special clothes that you can now reallocate that money and closet space to um, something new? Just always remember, you got to look at the, the, the several aspects of letting go of, of an activity. There's the activity itself, which frees up time for sure. There is the um, freeing up the accoutrements, which will make more space for you to do the new things and the money allocations, which free up your budget to do other things. But there's also a people piece. Um, and it really depends on the activity. Some activities you can just walk away from and you didn't have a whole lot of interaction with the people at the gym or, or whatever. But sometimes you've built some relationships and on committees or um, work collaborations. And you want to look at which of those relationships do you want to carry forward uh, as friendships or uh, keep the ties strong enough to do future collaborations uh, if you need to get back to that. So it's not about just leaving activities and burning bridges or anything like that. It is about really evaluating what's important to you and what aspects are and making sure you tie up all the loose threads. Um, I feel like when people make a decision to leave an activity, if they leave too many of the doorways open or, or unfinished, like dealing with the, the um, people part or the money part, um, you may feel pulled back to it because you haven't fully cut yourself let go of the activity. All right. I hope this helps. Um, I just did this exercise with one of my clients um, and realized that there was like two or three things they were still participating in that really weren't serving them anymore. And so they're going by the wayside to make room for, for more of the things they really want in their life. And it's super exciting to see that happen for other people. And like I said, I've been doing it for myself over the last couple of weeks as well. Um, let me know what you discover as you go through all the different activities you participate in. Um, I can't wait to see what you do with your freed up time, money, and energy. All right. See you next week.